Hi guys! It's me, Melissa, from designsbylittlebee.etsy.com. Today I'm going to be doing what I hope is a quick tutorial on in the hoop bookmarks. Now I know that e-readers and e-books are um, all the rage, but I'm an old-fashioned girl. I still like to go to the library and check out a real book with real pages that I can turn. So if you're like me and you could use a little handy bookmark uh, to put in your favorite book or if you know somebody who does, you're really going to love making this project. And one of the great things about this project is that these are perfect for a 4x4 hoop. I make mine uh, in a 4x4 size and also in a longer 5x7 size, like a more traditional bookmark. But these are super easy to make. They require no extra materials like snaps or um, ribbons or loops or key rings or anything like that. So they're a great way to spend the afternoon just crafting up some, some neat little gifts, make great stocking stuffers, uh, happies for a friend who's going through a rough time. And today I'm going to show you how to make them. So the first thing you need is your design and your materials. So your design you can get from me or you can get from some other digitizers on Etsy or elsewhere on the interwebs. And the materials you need are very easy. I like to use uh, tearaway. You need like a medium, heavy-ish, you know, what you would use on any other in the hoop project. I like to use tearaway. In my opinion, it doesn't matter which one you use, but um, I love using tearaway because it's easier to tear uh, excess off for use later in a smaller project, so you can kind of conserve those scraps. You'll also need the fabric for your bookmark. Now this is up to you and your creative vision. I always recommend something that doesn't fray, like felt um, or vinyl. I get my marine vinyl from MicroWorld. Um, you can look them up on the internet. They are M-I-K-R-I -I World, and they have an array of craft supplies, but my favorite thing to get from them is their vinyl. They have marine vinyl, they have glitter marine vinyl, which is awesome because it's really shimmery. I just made a key fob last night with their glitter, can, uh, glitter marine canvas, and it's very shiny and sparkly, but it's also smooth. And that's what you want is a smooth stitching surface. So anyway, um, one thing I love that My Cry World has is a variety of these specialty vinyls. This one is the football vinyl. It looks and feels like a real football. They also have uh, the basketball feel. They have ones that look and feel like scales. Any In The Hoop project that you make would be so fun to craft with all these different kinds of vinyl. So that's what I've got today is just my stabilizer and my vinyl and that's all I need. Now just like with any other In The Hoop project, I want you to pay attention to the steps that are involved in making these bookmarks when you purchase them. I really toe the line between making a, an in the hoop project easy for you, the customer, to stitch out and making it how I think it looks best artistically. Here's what I mean by that. For the football, you'll see that it's got a black outline for the football and then black outline for the part of the bookmark. And it looks the exact same on the back. That's your finishing bean stitch. But for some other items that I do, if I think it would look best with um, the design and then an outline around it, I'll do that. For example, my Drama Llama bookmark. You'll see that the llama is done in some tan tones and then the llama is outlined in black. Then there's the pink I did with Drama and my finishing bean stitch was actually brown. I did that to match the bookmark. Now you could do it in any color. You could do that in black as well. I like the way this outline type stitch makes the little object really pop. The llama is really popping off of there and you don't have a, a black outline um, to distract from him. So really when you look at the sample photos and if a step list is given, always make sure you look at that and think in your head uh, which threads do I want to use for the outline, which threads do I want to use for um, the design on the inside of the, um, the in the hoop item and keep that in mind when you're setting up to do your project. So I've got my design all loaded up into my machine. For the purposes of this tutorial, I'm doing this football bookmark. For whatever reason, I always like to put my designs sideways like that. I use fast frames and I really just like the way that they um, the way that they go sideways so that the frame doesn't have a chance to bounce. 
because it's up in the stable part of the frame. If you don't know what that means, don't worry about it. Um, that's just the way I like to do mine. I was just explaining what sideways. So you see here that I've got my stabilizer hooped um, or clipped on my fast frame. I just like to clip mine. Now, this football bookmark in particular is super easy because it is just two colors. It's black for the outline and it's white for the stitches of the football. So the first thing I'm going to do is just quickly run that first step. This will be your placement stitch for your bookmark. Now your placement stitch is out and that shows you where to place your vinyl. You can use some adhesive spray, you can pin it. If you're using fast frames, you can clip your vinyl first. If you know where it's going to go, you can skip the placement altogether. It's your world, it's your project, do what you're most comfortable with. The next step is going to be the white parts of the football. That's the um, sides and the laces at the top. Now I want to reiterate that I do not do a tack down stitch. A tack down stitch for these types of in the hoop projects that you're going to use um, that you're going to cut out and use the final product is just a really good way to have wonky looking stitches on the edges. When you use a tack down stitch and then you do a bunch of details in the middle, especially something with a lot of fill in it, and then you do a final bean stitch, it can lend to a very messy look because your tack down and your final stitch, no matter how well you stabilize it, no matter how well it was digitized, can end up not matching up. So I don't do a tack down stitch. If you really just must have tack down, you are more than welcome to run that placement stitch again and it will do the exact same thing. I don't put them in there because I find that it's not necessary and it just leads to a more messy looking project. So now we're going to go ahead and go to the white parts of my football. And this will serve the purpose, in my opinion, of a tack down um, stitch. Now that's done and we only have one step left to go. The last step is to place a backing fabric on the back of your project to you utilize that finishing bean stitch and really seal up your project and cover up those ugly stitches. Now I just realized that I forgot to tell you what I used on the back of mine. I mentioned a backing fabric but then I didn't tell you what I used. I use um, marine vinyl would be fine since you're not putting snaps on these. Um, you could use felt. I find that gets a little um, it kind of pills or it gets dirty and it's harder to clean. Um, this, what I've been using for quite a while now is this stuff. If you've seen my live videos in my Facebook group, you know I'm crazy about the remnant section at Joanne, my favorite craft store. And um, I got this stuff. My followers have been calling it pleather. I don't really know what it is. I found it in the remnants bin and it's like some sort of an upholstery fabric and it does look like faux leather. So it may be pleather. But it's thin, it doesn't fray, and it's nice and smooth. So if I did get something on here, like one of my kids, you know, uh, marked on it with a marker or something, I could just wipe it off. So I really like this stuff to use. If you're using a single needle, I highly recommend taking your hoop off and flipping it over like this. You see there's the ugly part. And I recommend um, you can pin if you'd like. Um, you can also use a spray adhesive. All you need is for something to just stick it on there just for a second until those stitches start um, picking up for, your fin for that final step. What I usually do is just cut a piece long enough to clip onto my fast frame. And then I just clip them along with the rest of that bookmark design and bam, I'm done. And then I hit go and it's going to stitch out a nice clean bean stitch and that will sandwich all these pieces together and then we'll be done with our machine work. All right, now all of our machine work is done and we have this adorable finished product. Only thing left to do now is cut. This is the easy part. These would be great stocking stuffers, uh, fundraiser items, just a little happy for somebody who needs it. Imagine how cute this would be to help a student remember that all-important schoolwork 
You could put their name on the bookmark part of it using your own software. You could put uh, BHS or RHS or wherever they go to high school. And that was it. It was really that easy. That is my tutorial on the bookmark. That's it. And you can do that in a 4x4 hoop. Um, you could also use your software to put multiples in a hoop and do a bunch of them at the same time. I highly suggest Embrilliance Essentials for that and I'll put a link to their um, to a site where you can check out their software down below this video. And if you like this project and you'd like to see more tutorials that I do, be sure to hit subscribe down below the video. And I hope you like that project. I hope you get a lot of fun out of it or make some money off of it. And I will chat with you in my Facebook group and I will talk to you later. Bye.